At their best, posthumous albums can be a tasteful last hurrah for an artist, being met with critic and fan acclaim alike. At their worst, you get this. Here's how XXXTentacion's label ruined his legacy with one laughably bad album. Bad vibes forever. Terrorism is alive and well. ISIS in album form released in December 2019. An early Christmas present if your idea of Christmas involves Jesus, Mary, and Noah Cyrus. Unfortunately, this project ended up being a vapid, misguided, unfinished cash grab from the label. The material here is paper thin, with most of X's vocals sounding like throwaway voice notes, both in audio quality and lyrical substance. Not to mention the lacklustre and out of place features and bland, inconsistent instrumentals that riddle this album. The project itself is 25 tracks long, because 24 wasn't enough, and it really is an arduous listen. Yet, most tracks on here aren't longer than two minutes, so the album is simultaneously bloated and flimsy, like a balloon. And just like a balloon, this thing is fun to fill up with water, stab with a knife, and blow up. Very rarely does it feel like the songs on this project achieve what they set out to do, probably because most of X's performances sound like reference vocals or playful crooning. It doesn't help that all of the songs feel pieced together in the worst way possible, making for a soulless, Frankenstein's monster of an album. X's vocals on here are seemingly mushed together from older songs, studio sessions and voice notes, and you can even tell when vocals on the same track have been taken from different sources. This album is the musical equivalent of bringing back an actor for a movie using CGI. It's uncanny and disrespectful. Like when they brought back Bruce Lee for a whiskey advert 40 years after his death with those PS2 ass graphics. All in all, Bad Vibes Forever is the sort of project that you wish you could get a restraining order against. Like, I don't want this album coming within 500 meters of my house. But before I continue to complain, let me give you a track by track run through of Bad Vibes Forever so we can pinpoint exactly where things went wrong. Track 1 Introduction. Here, here's where things went wrong. Moving on to the first actual song of the album, X. There are some pleasant vocals here, but the song doesn't really go anywhere and it ends up sounding like a demo, a theme which definitely won't continue throughout this album. Track 3 is titled Ugly. Oh look, it says it right there. Oh I was waiting for the song to start, it never did. The title track, Bad Vibes Forever, is next, which is a pretty enjoyable track all things considered, with decent features, but there isn't all that much to say other than that. With the title like School Shooters, you'd probably expect this song to be bad. It is. X is barely on the song, and just when you think it's about to start getting good with X adopting a shouted delivery, it ends. Next we have I Changed Her Life. Changed whose life? No one cares. X's vocals sound like they were recorded on a 3DS. She said, oh my God, I changed her life. Track 7 is Triumph. This song has similar vibes to X Bitch, and again, doesn't really feel like an actual song. The guitar here is also too loud and overbearing, so it's a struggle to hear the vocals. Like, imagine if for the rest of this video, there was a guitar playing so loudly that you can't hear anything I'm saying because it's too loud. That would be annoying, right? The next song is Limbo, and the bar was definitely lowered here. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! X's contribution on this track barely even constitutes a feature, let alone it being his song. It's a poor song overall. The ninth song on the album is Before I Realize, as in quick, skip the song before I realize what's even playing. Uh, for my notes here, I literally have the words da 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 over and over again, and I don't know why. Oh yeah, that's why. Ecstasy features easily the most expressive instrumental on the album, which, to be fair, isn't saying all that much. Either way, it's wasted on Noah Cyrus. Also, X on this track sounds like he was in the corner recording his vocals, like, speak up man. Noah Cyrus and X don't really seem to mix that well. I've been in physics classes that have more chemistry. Next we have Kill My Vibe. The question mark type beat goes pretty hard here, and X's chorus is enjoyable, though simple. But who the hell is Tom G? Why is he here? And someone get him some cough medicine. Jesus. Next we have Hot Gyal. I don't know if I can say go like that. It feels kind of racist. But anyway, this song is just not enjoyable. It's like a bad version of I Don't Even Speak Spanish Lol. Tory Lanez is on this song, and in his verse, he shoots his shot at this quote-unquote hot girl. Not the first time he shot at a woman. The only time I feel alive. I wish I wasn't. This track is a special kind of bad. It's unlistenable and embarrassing. Why would they even think to put this out? X's delivery here is horrendous. I genuinely think this is just him mumbling to a melody that he was planning to write to later. Plus, the last minute of the song is so disjointed from the rest. But it's the same chorus, just with a better delivery. What, like, why didn't they use the chorus that they used in the later half of the song throughout the whole thing? The interlude that never ends. 
Is that a threat or a promise? The track Demons is actually good. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. The lyrics are dark and hard to listen to, so there's not all that much replay value, but it's not a bad song overall. Again, the song Attention is a relatively fun listen as well. I like the play on XXXTentacion in the chorus, and the song is actually complete. Wait a minute, could this album be taking a turn for the better? Perhaps the tracks from here on out will be good. Maybe, just maybe, I might enjoy the rest of the songs on this album. Eat it up as a throwaway. Voss is not very good. Royalty is bad. Wanna grow old? No, and my suffering now. X literally says eight words on this song. Eight words. And that's including oh, which it really shouldn't. Side note, this song features a guy that looks like someone's first attempt at drawing DJ Khaled. Heart Eater is enjoyable, though repetitive, and most of the song is just the instrumental. I do like the electric guitar here, but this song still pales in comparison to X's prehumus music? Is that a word? Prehumus? Basically what I'm saying is, the worst music that X put out before he died is still way better than even the best tracks on this album. North Star is just not a song you would ever want to listen to again. X's verse is somewhat humorous, but Joyner Lucas is awful here. This has got to be one of the worst lyrics I've ever heard, and I've listened to Nav. Wow, they actually did it. This song is worse than the only time I feel alive. It sounds like that noise you get when you unplug the aux cord. Chase slash glass shards? More like slash my wrist with glass shards. But because the song's bad. Numb the pain. <laughs> I wish I could. I don't know about you, but where I'm from, we call that alcoholism. This is another song that's unfinished, but it is sort of catchy and it would be okay as an interlude, but nothing more. And now for the final track on the album. It's all fading to black. We did it. We made it to the final track. Listening to this album is worse than... I don't want to say child, but... What a send-off to this album. <laughs> Again, this track is another one that just sounds like a voice memo. Blink-182 are also featured on this track. That's all I have to say. Yeah, so X's label really milked the cow dry with this album. At least Skins was short, and the tracks mostly sounded finished. Bad Vibes Forever is the complete opposite. Part of the appeal with X's music was the scarcity of it. At the time of his death, he only had a few hours worth of music available on Spotify and Apple Music, but now that number has skyrocketed, and it's for the worse. When X released music, it was deliberate, and you could tell it was coming from him. No one else could have songs like The Remedy for a Broken Heart and Floor 555 back to back on an album, but when his label puts out music, it's just coming from a soulless corporate shell who are piecing together the remnants of half-finished tracks. When X released a song that was one to two minutes long, he left you wanting more, but when his label put out a track of the same length, they have you counting down the seconds until it ends. It really speaks volumes that, despite ramming each and every track on this project with features, the songs don't even make it to two minutes in runtime. And not only that, it becomes blindingly obvious that projects like Bad Vibes Forever aren't released to continue X's legacy or give his fans music, but instead to profit off his death. Because of this, the music quality and X's legacy as a whole has been tarnished. But at the very least, Bad Vibes Forever is X's final album, meaning we won't have to see the label taking advantage of the rapper, his name, or his legacy anymore. Okay, what the fuck? Living in London be like. <laughs>